Hi, my name is Michael. I'm the developer for the Buto uh, Universal Render Pipeline Volumetric and Lighting Fog. Uh, Buto is um, a new asset that I developed specifically for Universal Render Pipeline in order to fill the gap of volumetric lighting, volumetric fog present um, for this pipeline. Uh, the objective for this asset is to enable developers to easily introduce volumetric stylized lighting and fog into their scenes um, and this is physically based but I have included a variety of parameters that allow you to um, bring it outside of the realm of physically based uh, stylized lighting so um, you'll be able to do physically based you'll be able to do stylized all with just this one asset um, so it's really good at rendering fog doing it quickly the performance is good um, and giving you a few high impact parameters that you can customize um, without overwhelming you with way too many options, way too many settings, or a complicated setup. That being said, Buto is a screen space um, uh, fog effect. Um, it is rendered uh, using ray marching, so we do go through the scene using ray marching, the standard volumetric approaches outlined in AAA papers. but um, but as a screen space effect, uh, it does um, have some trouble rendering transparency. Basically, transparency will either be rendered before or after the fog. I've chosen here to always render transparency um, basically like unaffected by the fog. And so you'll see that the transparency here are, are not really affected by the fog. Um, you can see they still look great in this scene. And um, the second thing is that you might see some noise going on in the scene if you do zoom in quite a lot. Um, and that's just a um, consequence of the screen space nature um, of this effect. Okay, so uh, having said that, I'll talk to you a little bit now about the initial configuration, how to set it up, and how to configure a new material using Buto. Okay, so it's your first time using Buto. You booted it up, you have your sort of scene that you're working on um, in Unity right now. And um, basically it just takes two simple steps to set up Buto to work within your scene. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go over to the Oka Software Buto folder that you've imported into your project. And then you're gonna open the prefab section and drag and drop your Buto fog volume into the rendering section. Um, here I've just labeled different groups um, to make things easier for myself. So. Here we have rendering, and then you're going to drop that in there. You'll see that the Buto fog volume includes a Buto fog component, uh, which just contains a reference to a volumetric fog material, your Buto fog settings. Um, you can have any number of fog settings. I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, but first, we're going to finish up the setup. So uh, you've dragged and dropped your Buto fog volume into the scene. The next step is to pop open your forward renderer click Add Renderer Feature, and then add your Buto Volumetric Lighting and Fog Renderer Feature. That's it. Two easy steps, drag and drop the prefab, add the Renderer Feature to your forward renderer. Okay, so you have your Buto Fog Volume. You want to change the settings. Say you have um, these default settings, you like them, you want something slightly different, maybe in a different scene and you don't want to modify the settings that you've already configured for your initial scene. So what you'll do is you'll just go over to your materials, select the existing Buto fog settings, duplicate it, make any changes you might want to make. Here, I'll just adjust the anisotropy, adjust the height falloff, and let's see, um, adjust some of the noise intensity settings. And then you'll go back over to your Buto fog volume and then drag and drop your new fog settings. And you can see those are already immediately applied into your scene. Um, so really easy setup there. Um, and now I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the parameters that I was just using and what all those different buttons do. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit now about the different parameters that are available to you when using the Buto fog volume. Um, we'll just work through each of these in order. Um, and I'll start by talking about some of the default parameters that I have set up. 
So the first thing that you'll want to understand is that the main light color um, will affect the lit color of the fog, the lit fog. Um, the second thing is that the world color will affect the shadowed area of the fog. Um, the, lit, the world color is set by this environmental lighting. So if you want to adjust the shadowed color of the fog, you can go in here and adjust these settings. And as you see, as I adjust these, you can see the shadowed color changing. I'll bring that back. This is not affected by the skybox. Um, the last thing is that the fog does have the ability to include an emission variable. Um, by default, the emission is set to zero, um, but you can control the emission using a color ramp. I'll get into the color ramps in a bit. So now we'll take a look at what all these different buttons do. So the max distance for the volumetric fog controls the extent, the depth within the scene to which we sample the volumetric component of the fog. And then after that, we'll sample out to the max distance of the non-volumetric fog. Um, so that's just exponential fog, uh, analytical, uh, analytic depth fog. And uh, anisotropy affects the uh, interaction of the main light with the lit areas of the fog. So you can see as I raise this, the fog becomes very intensely lit closer to the sun. And as you bring it down to negative, the light is actually bouncing um, back away from the sun. And so uh, if you look back there, you'll see that that's where that lighting is going. I think uh, setting around point 0.1 is really good for getting some of these uh, shadows here um, around the objects in the scene. The next setting is the base height. Uh, base height, basically exactly what it sounds, controls where the fog starts and ends on the Y axis. And the height fall off controls how quickly the fog fades out. Bringing this down causes it to fade out more slowly, bringing it up causes it to fade out more quickly and the fog density controls how dense is the actual fog in your scene you can make it super dense you can see that transparency uh, sort of constraint that i was talking about earlier and uh, then we have the lighting and shadow intensity so these are more of the stylized functionalities that are present in this asset um, leaving them at one leaves you with more physically based results changing them gives you less physically based results so uh, increasing the light intensity will cause lit areas of the fog to be lit more intensely. Um, bringing this down causes it to be lit less intensely, basically only using the transmission um, parameter, basically only darkening the scene there. So I recommend one or something greater than one, but lower values can be appropriate in certain circumstances. Um, same thing with shadow intensity. You can see as I bring this up, the intensity of the shadow does increase but again that's not physically based um, so leave this at one if you want something physically based or increase it or decrease it if you want something more stylized the next section is the color ramp um, so i'll talk a little bit more about how to create a color ramp later for now i've included a variety of 10 different color ramps built into the scene the color ramp influence is set to zero by default, meaning that we're not using the color ramp whatsoever. But if we drag in a color ramp texture, you can see there's still no change. As we increase the color ramp influence, you can see that we're actually using the color ramp. This, in my opinion, doesn't look the best, but um, you have other settings here like this. So the color ramp basically describes over depth, um, what color do we want to use as the lit color the shadowed color and the emission color. This can have really interesting, really stylized results. It's again, not physically based. Um, and as we bring this color ramp influence all the way up to one, it becomes very not physically based. Um, so you're just gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, it does give you a lot of control. With that control, it can be easy to get things kind of out of hand. I've included a variety here of really interesting different looks that I think could complement a variety of different scenes. Um, you know, just keep that in mind. Okay, so bring that back down to zero. Um, the next thing that we're gonna look at is the noise texture. I've included a volumetric texture already in the asset for you to use. You can see that sort of panning across the screen here. Um, this noise texture basically adds texture to the distribution of particles that we're modeling in the atmosphere. Um, we have a tiling domain. So this is basically in meters, uh, 
along each axis of the perimeter of the square. Um, so if you bring this up, it um, tiles less frequency, less frequently. If you bring it down, it tiles more frequently. Kind of like that. You can see some repetition as this number gets way down. So I would recommend a value between say 20 and 60, um, depending on what kind of stylized look you're going for. And then you can also control the velocity of this texture moving through space. Um, bringing these numbers up can cause pretty wacky looking results um, if they are high enough. This is one meter per second on the x-axis, so keep these pretty limited. Um, sometimes it can also look nice to adjust it on the y-axis as well. And then down here we have the noise intensity min and max. Um, basically the noise um, will uh, be multiplied against the base fog density. So bringing the noise intensity down to zero um, will cause some areas to be having absolutely no fog whatsoever. Um, bring this all the way up to one. We'll make sure that all areas have at least the base minimum fog density and may have as much as twice the fog density. And then when we raise this, this can be as much as five times the base fog density. So that's how that works. So having talked about all those different buttons, uh, now I will take you through creating a color ramp um, and then wrap up. Okay, so you have Buto up and running. Now you want to create your own custom color ramp. I'll explain now the steps that you need to take in order to do that. We'll start by taking a quick look at the README. Um, I talk through here the different sections of uh, the color ramp. So your color ramp texture can have any dimensions. Be aware it'll be sampled along the X coordinate by the relative distance from the camera to the end of the volumetric fog. So as you move towards the right, you're going to get, um, it's going to be sampling further away from the camera and closer to the left is going to be affecting fog closer to the camera. Your Y coordinate is predetermined for each type of color. So your shadow color is selected from the bottom row, your lit color is selected from the middle row, and then your emission color is selected from the top row. Um, the color ramp is um, sampled using point filtering. Uh, I recommend using Adobe Color to identify your color ramps and using GIMP to create it. Um, so we're gonna start by popping over here to Adobe Color. I've already opened it up um, and gone to the Explore tab. You're gonna click here, View, Color Themes, Most Popular and select a color theme that you think looks good. We're gonna be working our way top down from the emission, then to the lit, and then to the shadow color. So we'll start with the emission color. You want a lighter, or sorry, a darker color for the emission color, because it can overwhelm your scene. We're gonna pick something like this, um, neutrals, and we're gonna bring down the value as we bring it into GIMP. You might be wondering how to set this up in GIMP, so you're just gonna go ahead and click File, New, um, I like to use a width of 5 and a height of 3. It keeps things really simple. Zooming all the way in. So this will be your emission color, your lit color, and then your shadow color. Um, so we're going to start bringing these colors in here. So that's too bright in my opinion. We're going to want to bring this down so that it doesn't completely overwhelm the scene. We're going to do the same thing for each of these other colors. We're going to add it in, bring the value down. And then as we work our way from left to right, that's affecting the fog that's further and further away from the camera. I like to use these color patterns or color, um, what do you call it, palettes, because um, I think that they automatically look good together and um, it really helps to kind of tie your scene together. So we've added that, that's the emission color. Next we're looking for a lit color. I like to use warmer colors for my lit um, maybe something like, let's see here, <laughs> maybe something like um, this, but we'll just bring the colors up as we bring it in. So these will be our lit colors. I think that this one's a bit too dark still, so I want to bring that value up. It's going to be a strong, very strong red coming in. This one also, I think it's a bit too dark, so I'm gonna bring that color up as well. And I think that's a bit too bright, like that I think looks good. That looks all right. That looks good. And I think this will look good as well. So these are our light colors. We're gonna see basically pinks um, and reds um, in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick our shadow colors. I think a dark uh, blue looks really good for the shadow color. Maybe we'll pick, um, let's see, we will pick this one. 
So these will be our shadow colors, and I'll probably bring down the uh, value of some of the shadows as we get further away from the camera. Let's see. So we're just bringing these in, pasting it in. I'm using a single pixel pencil, uh, using the pencil tool so that it doesn't um, uh, go into the other areas of the picture. So if you use something bigger like this, it'll start painting across lines. You don't want that. Okay, so now we're just going to export it. Um, I'm going to export it, bring it into Unity, and I'll come back in just a second. Okay, so now we have our color ramp imported into Unity. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to make sure that the import settings are configured correctly. Um, I like to bring the alpha source off, set non power of 2 to none. We don't need mip maps for this. We want to clamp it. We want point filtering. This is a really small texture. We don't need any compression. So now you've applied those settings, and all we have to do to affect, to use it to affect the scene is just drag that into the color ramp setting. You can already see it affecting the scene. I have the color ramp influence quite, set quite low. Um, as we bring that up, you can see that really strongly affecting the scene. You can see those pinks there that we were talking about. Um, the blues are a bit maybe too light in the shadows, um, but I think bringing it somewhere kind of in between lets us get the, the idea um, without going too overboard. So something like this I think looks quite nice. Um, and so you're getting that color ramp without going too crazy. And we'll just scroll around the scene here a little bit. Look, that's some nice colors in the blues. And then as you go out, you get those nice, nice reds, nice pinks. Beautiful. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. So that was just a demo about Puto volumetric fog and lighting for Unity URP. Uh, I talked about what it's good at, what it's less good at, how to set it up, how to configure a material, the main parameters, how to set up a color ramp as well. Um, and if you ever need any additional support, you can reach me at ocosoftware at gmail.com. You can get this asset on the Unity Asset Store for $9.99. I'll leave a link below in the description. And let me know if you have any you know, questions or comments or anything like that. Thanks for watching.